Ladies and gentlemen, you are now tuned in to Disarranged Talk Show. Joining you live from Be More and the D, your hosts, Andrew and Matt. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Hey, pal. Hey, my friend. How are you doing? Okay. Can't hear you over the music. We need to shut that off. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah. I How can. are you, my friend? What's going on? Um, Not much. I was actually looking at one of the current events while you were <laughs> while we were coming on here. So, uh, Not much, man. Yeah, it's been, been a long week. Um, sorry, for, sorry everybody for having to cancel last week uh, and push the show. We appreciate you uh, for joining us live tonight. Yes, uh, looking forward to to uh, to tonight's show. No, yeah, it was uh, a long week. I think for both of us, um, I didn't feel too good. I was battling some things, still battling some things. So, but. We talk about it all the time in the show, and that's just life. And right. We'll push through. We got a little diff- different view on the studio tonight because that's in construction. Because that was a, I like to start projects and do about ten percent of them and stop them. <laughs> so here we are. Do you want to share any uh, any of your struggles you've been going through the past week, or just stuff, physical stuff? Um, yeah. It, you know, I go through. Uh, I go through physical, emotional. When 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 I'm off, I'm off. So, Great. but uh, it's just one of those weeks, and, and it it turned out to be coming off of a three day break with work, which is logistically horrible for me. Going into another three three day weekend, and it's just uh, it's been a, a very very rough two weeks. So I haven't slept a ton and good sleep just on and off just being tired so right but i'm starting starting to feel a little bit better good well thanks for sharing buddy you know i'm here for you all the time uh even when i'm you're not and i and no, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get roasted here uh just in moments it's moments before i get roasted i can feel it uh it's in the air uh, but thank you very much everybody for joining us uh my name is Andrew. This is my co-host, Matt. Uh, tonight, we have a great show. Tonight's <laughs> uh, our very first uh, double header. We're going to be doing, uh, obviously, our live show tonight. And then directly after that, we are holding our first private uh, buddy check support group. Um, and uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm very, very excited to, to start that and see how that grows and uh, is more a part of our show. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Matt, I'd like to uh, I'd like to hear some uh, some current events from you, and uh, let's get into let's, it. Let's get into uh, into it, pal, shall we? Yeah. And now your news and current events with Matt G. So I, I just have a couple of current events. Uh, one of them is a big one, and it, it's a, a speech you know President Biden gave last night. Um, and (laughs) just, I I don't know what to, I, at this point, I don't know really where to go with this. I've kind of held my tongue on a lot of things and uh, I'll be, I'll be quite honest with, uh, with you. Um, well, most of the time when he gives speeches, first of all, I can't understand a a word that's coming out of his mouth. It sounds like he's choking on rocks or something. Someone just kicked him in the head. But last night he gave a speech, um, basically drawing a line in the sand from what I see. And I'll give you his exact quote here because I don't want to misquote the president. Um, He said, uh, Donald Trump and the MAGA MAGA Republicans, that's the Make America Great Again Republicans, represent an extremism that threatens our very foundation of republic. Uh, Biden went on to say the Make America Great Again Republicans uh, slogan stokes the flame of political violence, which I just find absolutely asinine and hilarious since him and his cronies fan the flame of burning down cities for a whole year. Uh, I, I just, I don't know where to go with this. And I, I watched the, his press secretary 
as she reads out of a book every day when people ask her questions because she has no friggin' idea what the hell she's talking about either. <laughs> um, she what said, you, hey, huh? No, oh, I, was, no I was just going to say, what is his angle? We're getting some feedback issues, bud. Let me back up. Is that better? <clears throat> yep. Okay. So this is the way I see it. The Democrats foresee coming up in midterms, they're going to lose um, the House and the Senate. Um, and really, I, I think they thought the a lot of the major issues, uh, primarily the, the biggest issue that they thought was going to sway a lot of people um, in the voting polls was the abortion issue. And, uh, and it did initially, I don't think it has had the effect now because his approval rate is starting to plummet again. And this is, I think this is where it's going now is he's, this is the only thing they have. Uh, some of the stuff this guy says, man, honestly, you know, I'm not, I don't fully support, I, I, I did vote for Donald Trump and I, I, I don't, I'm not going to apologize for that. I, I don't believe in everything he believes in. I don't know. I'm pretty halfway in the middle. Um, but some of this guy, some of the things this guy says behind a microphone, um, it, it sounds like he's literally insane and delirious. And it, it just makes me laugh because Trump couldn't pass gas without people calling for an impeachment. And this guy can't even speak. And then his press secretary, who's supposed to be the mouthpiece of the White House, has no idea what the hell is going on. Right. You know what I mean? We can literally, we can literally be in like mop suits with gas masks on walking around in a chemical environment. People would still be saying it's better. Well, at least Trump's not in office. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's just, uh, it's fascinating for me who doesn't like for somebody that doesn't, I don't really like pay attention to this and I know I should more. That's why I like, I enjoy talking to you about it, but it's fascinating to see, um, the drama that they just push into us, man. It's, it's unbelievable. The, 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 the divide that they push. It's, it's, it's incredible to watch. Well, what, what was my, what my thing was, is this, the main focal point for this whole, uh, his presidency and that the Democrats coming in was Donald Trump divided this nation. Donald Trump divided this nation. Donald Trump promotes hate and, and division in this country. And then, and then this ask gets on there last night. And if 50% of the country voted for Donald Trump, Right. You just told 50% of the country that they're extremists and the crap. So you just isolated 50% of your country. Yeah. I mean, blatantly. Right. You know what I mean? So it, it's just the, the, the hypocrisy, the ignorance, uh, everything that's behind a lot of what this administration, not Democrats, but this administration. Um, yeah. I, I'm going to bring up a great point uh, that your mom just chimed in on you know we had the one year anniversary of the the 13 um fallen service members in afghanistan and this nothing came out of the white house nothing was memorialized you know it's uh it's a is that actually the day before that he did a speech pretty much saying that um Right-wing extremists would need an F-15 to fight back the government. They want to take our weapons. I mean, this guy just says stuff. You know, I, I don't want to get too worked up. It's just, right. It's asinine. It's verbal diarrhea. Half the time, I can't even understand what he's saying. But then, the other half of the time, when he's talking, the stuff that comes out of his mouth is so mind-boggling, stupid, and and divisive and aggressive. And um, the hypocrisy behind the other party who, you know, used to say that, you know, Trump's a racist and, and this and that. And, I, and that, that's fine. I'm not saying he's a perfect guy. I'm not even saying he's on a race. I don't know. You know, I'm just saying what's coming out of this particular um, administration. administration is absolute shit. It's shit. <laughs> So and I and the perfect example of what I think is going on in the country right now is um, I heard someone talking. Someone asked somebody in my office the other day, "How do you think President Biden's doing?" And he's he's very far left, right? Mm -hmm. And 
he said, well, you know, honestly, I don't know. And the, and the, and the guy said, yeah, you do. You know, he's well, nothing he's done has affected my life so far. That and that I don't want to get up and, 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 and wrap my hands around the guy's neck. But that's the thing that pisses me off is that, you know, you're finding your cozy little house, you know, driving your Range Rover and sipping on your Starbucks because nothing affects your life. But then you have this mother, mother of three that's trying to work four jobs to pay for freaking a gallon of gas, feed her goddamn kids, mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't affect you. So you don't give a shit. Right. And you'll keep, you'll keep voting that as long as it doesn't affect you. It, it, it's just, it's incredible. I don't know. It's incredible. So I'll get off my soapbox, but uh, I, I tell you what, man, if, if, if Trump had made a speech like this, if he Trump, would, oh my if, God, well, he was ridiculed just for anything he did. So I, this, be, yeah, it would have been, it'd be wild if he made something exactly like this. He would, it, he it, was, would it was, I think that was, this is their last attempt to draw a line in the sand and, and kind of sway as many voters. They know they're going to lose. Uh, you're right. Uh, Pastor Reed, all we can do is pray for our nation. You're absolutely right. I'm not saying one side is absolutely correct and one side is absolutely wrong. I, I, I fall in the middle on a lot of stuff, but that crap last night, man, was just absolutely trash. It was hot garbage burning in a freaking dumpster. So um, I'll leave it at that. Very good. Thank you for that update, brother. <laughs> No, it's good. Listen, because I, I don't, you know, I enjoy this part and I, I, I'm looking forward to growing this segment of the show because a lot of the time, man, like this is the greatest thing, like a good dynamic with you and I is, you know, I don't I don't necessarily put my attention towards that. Um, I, you know, I, I value like my energy. I try to just focus it in other other ways because I do get too emotional about it. You know, I'm, I'm so it's just, good for, for me to hear it. That that the, the stoking the flame of political violence. We sat in my house for a year and watched Minnesota burn, watched all these cities burn. Right. And even after the, the Roe versus Wade uh, decision was made, his all the left Democrats got on TV and said, "Go, at, you know, we're inciting violence on uh, Supreme Court justices." I mean, these guys talk out of both sides of their damn mouth. Every freaking day, they're saying "don't do this," and then they're telling people "do this," you know. And it, it's just—it's just absolute trash, man. It's garbage. And, and I guess Pastor Reed's probably got the best—the the best answer for it. All you can really do is pray at this point, because I—I don't—I have no idea. So, <laughs> happy Friday. It's good stuff, buddy. On to uh, what else you got for us? Yeah, so next, I, I, I wanted to talk to you. Have you seen Game of Thrones? I have not seen the Game of Thrones. Okay. So Game of Thrones, arguably one of the the biggest shows of all time, probably maybe next to Sopranos. Uh, I don't know if you probably not haven't watched Sopranos. Excuse me. I have seen the Sopranos, yes. Um. Okay. <laughs> Game. I I started watching Game of Thrones when I was training in the Marine Corps. I think it's Twenty Nine Palms. Uh, this is way after you had got out, and I I got up to like this this one uh, episode where there was the red wedding. If you mm -hmm. look it up, you'll see it. Okay. And basically, like all my favorite characters die, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, f this. I shut. I stopped watching it, but I uh, I wasn't feeling good um, this week, so I said I'm gonna start it again, dude. I I. I bench watched eight seasons of this stuff, and I'm telling you, it's like some of the best entertainment I've ever seen in my life. I mean, really? oh my gosh, absolutely, absolutely insane. I mean, there's 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 violence, there's incest, there's just <laughs> everything you want in a TV show, right? Okay. So the follow on or the follow on show that they have been planning for a long time um, is House of Dragons. It's based on the fam the Targaryen family. Who, who has control of these dragons. It is a prequel, which means it, it was supposed to be before um, Goat 1 through... So See, I, I like I liked season 8. I, I didn't have a problem with it. I, I didn't mind the ending either, other than that 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 uh, the weird brand, brand of Broken being the king. But I'm sorry, I spoiled it for everybody if you haven't seen it. <laughs> but uh, 
The follow on House of Dragons, two episodes in, absolutely fantastic. It is a, it, I mean, there's, like I said, right back at it with the violence, with the treachery, which, with the incest and sex. I mean, it's, can't ask for much more, but. That's, uh, <laughs> that's an interesting, uh, interesting show. I mean, listen, so uh, I have a lot of friends that have watched it and they've always asked me, they're like, they're like, hey, Turner, have you watched it? I'm like, no, I, I've never gotten into it. I don't know. I just, uh, I no, guess yeah. I if you sat down, if you sat down and, and forced yourself to get into like three episodes, you'll you'll keep it in play in the next episode. I mean, I think I went one day, I think it was Saturday, I went from like 10 in the morning until 2 the following morning. My God. You know, right. and in, in between there, I went to the bathroom and let the dogs out. And, and uh, that's it. That was it. But I, I do that. <clears throat> I had I had Marine Corps bearing. I was pressed in. I was locked in, thirty yards. You know, what I mean, yeah, I was in it. So no, it's fantastic. House of Dragons. If you're a goat fan, you haven't seen House of Dragons. First two episodes are on HBO. Can't wait for the third. Absolutely fantastic. A plus review. A plus review by uh, uh, Matt G. Our uh, news and current events. We'll have the phone lines open later, so you can throw your opinions in. But uh, we're going to be moving on. Uh, to talk to about uh, tonight's guest. Tonight's guest. Uh, tonight we are focused on uh, one topic, really, and one topic only. We're going to be discussing uh, suicide awareness um, with uh, Gunnery Sergeant Michael Perez of the United States Marine Corps. Uh, he is currently serving in uh, a reserve unit out in Colorado. Um, so I'm interested to to hear the the dynamic. Um, of that world versus um, active duty. And so tonight, you know, we, when we focus on suicide awareness, uh, we're looking at both sides of the spectrum. We're looking at the civilian side, also along as the veterans, because we're all one community. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, read verbatim uh, some of the stuff I pulled from the United Health Foundation uh, about suicide. Uh, and suicide awareness. Suicide is a troubling public health issue that leaves a lasting impact on families, which we all uh, know and understand that. I'll just throw some statistics at you. Uh, between 1999 and 2019, the suicide death rate increased 33%. Um, now, now, just as a reminder, this isn't uh, just veterans. This is all of us as a community. Uh, there were nearly 46,000 deaths by suicide in 2020 making it the 12th leading cause of death in the United States. According to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, uh, that same year, 12.2 million adults seriously thought about suicide, 3.2 million made a plan, 1.2 million attempted suicide within that past year. Um, recording suicide attempts amongst older adults are usually more lethal than the ones of the younger group, which, which really makes sense. So now if we uh, I wanted to split it and kind of segue into um, our, our guests uh, world, according to the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs uh, in 2021, the National Ve Veteran Affairs Suicide Annual Report, and you can find all this online at the VA.gov, um, the overall suicide count and rate decreased in 2019 from 2018 and from 2017. Uh, so I'm interested to hear uh, live action if, if these numbers are going down and, and we've kind of got some boots on deck. So i um, here to give his professional opinion, uh, Mr. Gunny Michael Perez. And now your news and current events right. with Matt G. Right back there with Matt G. Hey, listen, and, Andrew's on his game. Uh, he's, he's all over it, pal. So I'm hey. surprised. I'm surprised he didn't just kick you out of the studio. Hey, so listen, <laughs> we're uh, after after tonight's show. We'll be looking for a new co-host. That's in uh, can help click some buttons over here. But anyways, <laughs> Mickey G, how we doing, brother? Hey, how's it going, man? Andy, Matt, so glad to talk to you guys. Miss you guys so much. Yeah, man, it's it's awesome. Uh, finally, getting in touch with you, and uh, we had uh, we had something scheduled last week. <laughs> and I, man, I, I tell you, I was last week. I think I was I was prepped. I was ready to go. The studio was looking great. 
and uh, you know, Andrew wanted to take a vacation, so you know, you know, I, life happens. Go ahead, man. boys. Go ahead, get it out. Let's go. Come on. No, get no, it no. Out. It's fine, man. Hey, I'm just happy to see you here today, Andy. Thanks for gonna get thanks Andy. for showing up on your own show. <laughs> yeah, going good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's, well, that's, I, appreciate, I appreciate you asked how my week was. You know, oh, like, how was uh, it? It was very good. It was very good. You know, I. Well, if you I, usually I, text me on the right time, I'll probably receive them. But I never got them until today. Yeah, and 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 look, Andrew. Andrew said he didn't. Have time. <laughs> Andrew said he didn't have time to contact you this week. But then I look on Facebook, and he's sitting there stroking his dog at a bar in a ho hotel lounge. So. <laughs> hey, that's, yeah, that's the good part, though. I guess that's his gateway. You know. Through his mental yeah. health is that little. Hey, but I know you're gonna. I don't even. We should call it a dog, but it's something. Yeah. Oh I know. my god, yo, that's hold on, that's that's incredible. Ooh. That's fire. I'm surprised. I, I know, Go ahead. Go I ahead. know you're gonna recommend. Uh, people want to come on the show. I know you're gonna give us uh, just raving reviews as far as how you were treated since. Uh, SR reviews. Yeah. Yeah. The first time you got contacted in two weeks was like 45 minutes before the show. <laughs> oh my god well listen like all right we're here we're together we are this let's, is what he does this is what he does let's, let's whip this on all right so all right let's uh, do it. thank you mike real talk thank you for for joining us tonight man um so listen i want to jump right into it uh you know give uh give our audience a little bit of background who you are where you come from and how you know matt and i all right hey so um uh, my name is Mike Perez, of course, I come from uh, Harrison, New Jersey. Um, you know, I grew up in the Marine Corps, uh, and these are my two stud NCOs that received me with great open arms when I joined, right? Um, things that I would never forget, man, you guys always been brothers to me, always been there for me, always told me, and the biggest thing that always kept with me was never forget where you come from. Not meaning like, hey, you're not going to change while you move on up, but at the same time, Stay with your same morals, stay with your same concepts, because at the end of the day, what you are and who you are is what's going to keep on growing. So I did that. I took pieces of you guys, took that with me um, and kept pushing forward. So a uh, quick story about me. I, I was very athletic as a kid. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was at this point in my life where I was like, what am I going to do next? Like college at that point, I didn't think was an option. And uh, I thought the Marine Corps would be the best, the next best step. So. Look at me now, uh, gunning in the Marine Corps. So I'm pretty, pretty happy, you know. Good, awesome, brother. That's that's great, Matt. No, I I just I remember uh, Mike, and I'll, I'll call you Mike, Gunning Perez. Um, when when he show was a little respect, hey Matt, show a little respect, okay, pal. You saying that is is just the most asinine thing in the world. When you <laughs> say, show respect, no, but I. Mike was a great Marine, man. He was, uh, you could tell always that number one, he had a good heart. So I knew he was going to be a good leader. He had good character. Uh, he was a solid guy. And, and uh, sometimes you have like really good Marines who could run fast and do all this stuff. But at the core of their, their person, you can tell that they're a piece of shit, to be quite honest. Um, I mean, you could tell right off the bat that uh, Mike was a good guy. He, he was a good kid. He's he had a good character and a good heart and he had all the other intangibles that went with it. So, um, seeing you sitting here as a gunnery sergeant is no surprise to me at all. Yeah. I, I appreciate that. Bro. Well said, well said, you know, you're, you're a great Marine. You know, how always have been, uh, you've obviously worked hard and earned where you are. And I just, you know, I see, uh, every time I see a picture with that big old cockroach on your, uh, on your collar, man, it just, it makes me, it makes me smile, man. So congratulations for all your hard work and, and really, getting up to where you're at man i do appreciate it guys. So i do want i do want to ask so now you're in a completely different world that matt and i i don't think matt and i really know nothing about what was it like what's it like uh working in the reserve unit side and i'm curious uh is suicide prevention um a, a higher priority with the, on the reservist side uh versus the active duty side so Working with the reserves is definitely um, is definitely a new tasker for me, right? It's uh, it's an amazing feeling. It's not like you have such a limited time, and you have to be the person that puts the puzzle all together for them when they get there. 
So you yeah. do have a lot more actions to do um, compared to being like in the fleet. I have my S shops and stuff to lock things down for me. I'm pretty much along for the ride, just as long as my cannons are put, pointed at the right azimuth of fire, I'm good to go, right? But here I'm the I'm the one with my my, my brother, my 4-8. We're both locking things down. He's locking down ranges while I'm locking down ammo. So there's a lot more things to go with it. Um, when it comes right. to uh, the difference between an active duty side and a reserve side, uh, those Marines are devil dogs at the same time. Like the reserve mm -hmm. Marines, they put on that suit and they're down. They're, I, I'm telling you, like, it's so, I don't know if it's because um, they don't, when they come to, they come to play, you know what I mean? They come with their A game on, like, hey, we're going to come shoot these out. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 not even night and day like it's almost like once you see your devil dogs they're devil dogs it's not even like hey right. this is a service you forget you know and really? you go out there. um wow. there's a lot more uh crunch time because you only have maybe 48 hours maybe uh close to 72 hours to go ahead and train them unless you're doing like an at which is like uh it's like they're uh steel knight or they're uh you know rolling thunder type thing you know yep but uh, that's about two weeks, you know. So we did. Uh, we went to RAT up in Washington State this year, and um, trained for two weeks. And these dudes were hooking and jabbing like they never left, or they didn't have a different job afterwards. It's just insane. So the reason why the reason why I ask if the the suicide prevention is a higher priority in the reserve side is because I've I've heard things back when you know back when Matt and I were even in that. Uh, you have to kind of treat the reservists a little bit different because they have to go back to normal life. So it's, you know, they're not, they're not uh, immersed in it or pickled in it, if you will. Like they, like you said, they show up, they train hard, but then they have to go back to the nine to five for three weeks uh, and, you know, the rest of the year. So have you, is, is, is that kind of a, is that a thing? Honestly, like, like I said, like it's, it's the same thing. Um, okay. you have some pe individuals are either with it or without it. Like they don't have the mindset maybe, but, mm -hmm. um, there, there's no difference. These guys come in and you'll be like looking at these Marines and you're like, that's that would dog that you see in the fleet, you know? And, um, it's just the same. Well, as I guess thing. in terms, like, I guess what I, I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm asking is in terms of it being on the administrative side when it's what's coming down and what you have to push in terms of education to those Marines is, do you see a difference between active duty and reservists in terms of how hard they're trying to push a message in a specific, or is it standard across the yeah. board? Or is it standard? No, yeah, across it's the same the exact board? thing. So like everybody has to go through that whole entire standard. So even if I get uh, like, you know, usually throughout the year, be like, Hey, we're going to talk about this class. Right now. Imagine right. talking about that class in the fleet. You had that set up for Tuesday and then it's just right. a random Tuesday. Here is like next month on Tuesday. Not only are we doing the CFT, we're doing annual training. We're doing suicide prevention. And we're just trying to cramp even more. But at so, the same time, we're giving that training. You know what I mean? So does that make it more difficult on your part as a leader? If you see some of those signs and suicide, those those suicide prevention signs in, in your Marines coming in, you only have a weekend with them or or maybe two weeks if you're going to the field. Is that is that more of a, a difficult task to try to, you know, get with that Marine and, and figure out what's going on as, as opposed to having an active duty side where you see them every single day? No. Um, I, and I think that's depending on the leader, right? Um, mm -hmm. You should be able to pick up on a lot of people's signals right off the bat if you're a good person. Um, a Marine that just comes up to you and is – you could tell he's shaking. He's acting kind of weird, you know, like right off the bat, that should tell you like, Hey dude, you good. So like, for example, I'll tell you guys a quick story. I'm not going to put no names out there. We were out, um, you know, working on, uh, we were at, yeah, we were in the training area. We're over here. Everybody's hustling, right? Everybody knows how the gun line is. Everybody's running. Right. So as you can see, there's one kid's running and as he's running, he falls down. Like he kind of like trips. Right. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I'm like, hey, devil, you good? You know, just trying to get him, like, is he all right? He looks at me, right. and right off the bat, when he looked at me, you could tell that his face was just Someone blank. Was hey, brother, come here. I call him over. He comes to me. He's like, yes, Gunny. Voice cracks right away. Why? Because someone said, are you good? Right after that, 
starts crying. Hey, sit down. Now mm -hmm. let's talk. Come to find out the kid was just stressed out, right? So um, the signals are there. I think what a lot of leaders like to do sometimes is either ignore it, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but they're, they're scared to talk about it, right? So that's right. the biggest thing about this whole entire message we're delivering right now. Yeah. Right. Don't be scared. Talk to your Marine. It's a out there to talk to them in their heart to be like hey man sit there make sure he's good to go and then guess what that dude got up wiped his face off i was like hey wash your face before you go back out to the gun line you know washes his face and the dude was killing it you know and it was just more there to the story that nobody else knew about and nobody asked him and when i asked him about it we talked about it my man was back to normal you know so um i think and that was literally my first field out with these guys. I, I didn't do anything really beforehand. We did a couple of like backyard uh, drills, which is like right at the office, seeing faces here and there. But within a week, I could already tell you if a Marine felt depressed or if he just wasn't acting normal, you know? Do you think that um, you? it's been 10 years since we've been out and since we, I've served with you? During that time that we served together and you coming up as a young Marine, do you think that uh, the culture of the Marine Corps is shifting into a more of a positive manner of, of having Marines come forward uh, when they're starting to maybe feel a little uh, emotionally disconnected? Oh, man, absolutely. I yeah. think um, we're developing so, so good in the positive, right? Like leaders are exactly how you guys were before you guys left. You know, like you guys were different NCOs. You guys cared, right? You guys would be like, hey, Perez, what's wrong with you, man? And you would bring me to the side. Hey, you good? Because you knew who I was, right? It was more like, hey, I'm an NCO. I'm not going to talk to you. Th those things existed back in the day, right? Hey, if I'm an NCO, don't even get near me. No, it was more like, hey, brother, at the end of the day, you know I'm your boss, right? But at the same time, I expect to know you more than what you are. I know you have a wife, you know, like, I know what you're going through and I'm here for you. And that's why I, I see the Marine Corps growing. You guys now as leaders and me being up there, it's mm -hmm. like we're more involved with understanding our Marines and being able to call those signs and not be scared to say it, you know? So uh, mm -hmm. we're moving in a very positive uh, approach now. And it's almost on everything we do. There's all these different type of trainings with annual training and uh, people are giving their actual life stories, you know, like, when I teach a class now, I'm giving a class about people that I knew took their life, right? Right. People that are going to feel like, oh, man, this is not just a story he's talking about. It's more like, man, this is real. Like, this happened right. to Gunny Perez, you know, like, no you know, Josh Wright, you know, we all love him, but that's a real life story, you know, and I'm not going to put it out there, but none of us will ever forget it, right? Like, that was something yeah. that happened, and we lost a lot of brothers, man, due to mental health in general, so... Um, those stories that I, I know are there, I always tell my Marines in self-confidence so they understand and uh, they don't fall back into the behaviors that our friends and brothers did, you know, so right. those are, are real big things, man. So so tell us a little bit about what you um, what you like to do outside of the Marine Corps uh, and how you kind of are getting more involved with uh, certain companies and organizations that really do support mental health awareness uh, and uh, suicide prevention. All right, well, um, so a big thing about me, I wanna let everybody know, there's three things I live by, right? And that's uh, God, family, and core, right? So those okay. three big things are always what I'm gonna put first. So my biggest things, I am always, uh, I always got to praise God and thank him for everything he's given me, my family. Um, I'm very blessed to have what I have, my two little girls and things like that. And then, mm -hmm. um, um, so when it comes to those two things, those are like my biggest, highest priority and then the Marine Corps. So I've been very fortunate um, with being a gunny as young as I am and keep pushing. And what I like to do outside the Marine Corps, I love cars, you know? So um, mm -hmm. my biggest personality is cars. So I, uh, I used to have a, 2017 Volkswagen GLI and uh, I saw there was like a bunch of things you guys probably see it on Instagram all the time social media there's these hey get sponsored now or whatever you know so yeah I saw this one company come up endangered and uh, it wasn't like hey join this company now right it was more like 
hey, you're never alone. And I was like, man, those words mean something, right? So like, what what do I have to do to get part of that shit, right? And I thought it was very important. Um, so I put an application, you know, and the biggest mm-hmm. thing when before I put an application, you need to know about something, right? So I looked and read about what they're about and they're about mental health. And what's better, not about cars, only about cars. It's talking about something that's very important to us, you know, us in the military that we see all the time. And uh, mental health is not a joke, man. Like, we we uh, don't notice a lot how much our mind could take control. And I'm not no uh, doctor, right? I don't want to sit here and be like, hey, I know what happens to the human mind. That's not at all, right. you know. But at the same time, I can sit here and tell you that uh, someone does love you, you know, and a lot of times we forget to tell each other, you know, as as brothers, like, hey, I always tell you guys on the phone, hey, I love you guys. Bye. Why? Because yeah. I never know what's going to happen tomorrow. I never know if I'm going to see you guys again. I don't know if I'm going to die again. Oh, die right. again. I can't die twice. But if I was to die, you know, so <laughs> the biggest thing is I want to make the message out there. And for this car club to take me in the way it did, it was insane, you know. So they came, they – uh they only, I think, added 10 to 15 people to be part of the sponsorship because it's a small community. And um, they came and uh, brought me in. So now I'm part of this team, Endangered. And, um, you know, I post car picks. They have good gear. You know, I'm rocking their gear right now. Yes, sir. Um, That's what's up. A lot of their stuff, like these pins, 988, this talks about the suicide hotline, you know. So. That's a big thing um, that a lot of people need to know, right? So 988, you call this number, and there's going to be someone to talk to you no matter what. So this type of positivity is what we need in this world, and that's why I'm so blessed to be part of this company, to go ahead and push forward that, right? Because me as a man of God, as a Marine, as a leader, right, as a leader in general, I want to make sure that my my uh, Marines and the people that are around, like it doesn't even have to be Marines, you know, it just everybody is part of this positivity. So civilians and all, they get to right. see like, hey, you know what? There is someone to talk to me because I can tell you right now, like I think the biggest issues, um, you know, the, the small little details that I know, the high the higher rate of um, suicide is usually males. Right. So with that being said, it's not because they're committed to something. It's because it's so hard for us as men to open up. It's hard for me to come here and tell you, oh man, like I feel like I'm a failure at being a father, right? Because Mm -hmm. at that part, I feel like I already lost, but that shouldn't be it. Uh, At the end of the day, we all need someone to talk to. And I'm glad to say I could call every, any single one of you and be like, hey, you know what? Like I've been having this, 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 uh, this issue. And that's the biggest thing is speak up. We always know calm, 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 right? Communication is key. So, Mm -hmm. As long as we keep that communication going and people understand someone does love you. And that's why I tell my Marines all the time. I'm like, hey, because, you know, they'll, they'll get out of control sometimes and start yelling at somebody. And I'll be like, hey, dude, come here. That's fine. You can yell at him. I get it. But tell him why. Why are you yeah. yelling at him? Why are you upset? Right? Give him the reasoning to be like, oh, man, he wasn't just mad at me because he don't like me. He's mad at me because I messed up. Right? And, at the right. Same and time, it necessarily doesn't have to happen right then and there. Right. Exactly. You do, you do your you do your your correcting, you do your disciplining, you let you. I like to let it used to let it brew a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Let them really think about what the hell just happened and why their life just got turned upside down. And then after you pull that marine aside, and you're like, "Hey, devil dog, you know what I'm saying? That was nothing personal, but let me explain to you what the outcome would have been if you didn't do it this way." Right? Absolutely, man. And that's and one of the big key points that's away from you guys. You know? Right, Matt. I wouldn't have said shit. <laughs> you know what you were you i bet you you're the type of leader that that came in front of the the uh in platoon and introduced yourself as very unapproachable <laughs> he just like, said hi, hi I'm, oh, Seth, I'm, Seth Arm, I'm matthew gardner um i'm unapproachable. <laughs> i think we lost guns here but oh did uh did mikey mikey fall out yeah i think he froze up i i, I do want to talk uh while we're waiting for him to come back uh, very interesting point. If, if you go back to one of our very early episodes on, on uh, self care, we yes. talked about the exact same thing that uh, that Mike was just talking about. The fact that the suicide rate with men is so far higher than women because there's this precedent that's set on us as a a young a young person that 
you take this cross, you take um, all this weight, put it on your shoulders, you shut the F up and keep moving. And especially if you're a Marine, it's, it's even worse, right? Because not only when you, you got to take all the stress that you're getting at work and all the stress that you're getting from your Marines and all that stuff, then you go home and then you got to put on a smiling face for your wife and for your kids. And when, when, when does a man get to let loose? A lot of times you hear stories about like, um, I used to sit in my car and cry, man, sometimes. Cause there's just no other outlet for me. I didn't want to do it in front of my family. I didn't want to do it in front of my Marines or, you know, so I, there's a lot to be said about that. So I'm glad you brought that up, Mike. Awesome. Mike, let me, uh, let me ask you, man. Uh, I kind of, as we, we, we wrap this up, I want to give you the stage a little bit and I want you kind of to, if you could talk directly to um, our audience, let us know what you're up to. Uh, any any uh, final words of, of, of encouragement? Um, and um, yeah, the floor is yours, my friend. All right. Well, everybody, just my biggest message to every single person that's on here, man. Um, I know a lot of us, the one that's watch, uh, all the people that are watching right now are family. And what I mean by family is military related or my family is actually watching this. And uh, at the end of the day, we as disarranged 1775, because this right here, this show alone shows that we're together, right? This is a community for all of us to speak up. And um, we all love each other, right? We're here for every single one of us. So at the end of the day, if you just want to talk to anybody, it, either through here or on the side, we're here for that. And that's what the page is there for, right? This range 7075 is not to just talk about Matt's uh, Game of Thrones, you know? So, like, um, it's here to talk about, like, for real – what's going on, what's the new updates, and how can we help buddy check, right? Buddy check is a big key. I just heard my boy last week, man, um, well, two weeks ago, Jay Murda, man. I, right here, I'm telling you, man, you're one of the biggest positive influences in my life. And uh, I want you to hear that. I want you to see That's it awesome. live, that I love you, man. And I tell stories about you to this day. And that's how crazy of an impact that all you guys is. Uh-oh. Right when, right, right, right when we were getting into the good part about how awesome we were. Well, I think he was talking about me and, and I, Justin. I, I, think, I don't know if you were anywhere in that. Anywhere. I, but, but I, <laughs> I I believe I believe I was. Um, no, I, I, okay. Yeah, you know, I know. Uh, you know, I, I, I want to bring up another point. We talked about suicide prevention while we wait for guns to get back here. Um, I think a lot of those numbers skyrocketed um, because of social media. I think now you're fine. You're fine, Mike. I, I think uh, I think social media has played such a huge part in in, in a negative part um, in in a lot of these young people's lives when it comes to depression and anxiety. It, it's it's like you know when you see a fire and if you had a, a gas hose and you got to spray the gas on it, it's just, oh man, it's, uh, it's horrible. It's horrible for some of these kids, you know, they, they get ridiculed or bullied or, or anything, you know, for, for girls who, who do something and the other girls just shame them. And, uh, so I think social media has played a huge part in some of those numbers going up. You said 33%, Andrew, is that what you said? Yeah, it's up 33%. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think a lot of that probably has some, something to do with, with social media. It's uh, one of the very negative parts about it. Yeah, I agree. Mikey, uh, brother, uh, sorry you got a, a little interrupted right there, but um, any, any saved rounds? No, man, just positive vibes. Love you. And like I said, I hope everybody goes by their things, but God, family, core, always be the big three. Awesome. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Gunny Mikey Perez. Tonight's guest. Dude, that was great to, great to have him on. And Mike, just remember, as you're, you're still watching, brother, uh, right directly after this, we will be hosting our very first private uh, buddy check event. Um, so whoever has sent in their information should have an email in their inbox uh, explaining what to do and how to log on uh, in the next uh, 14 minutes. So before uh, before we get into all that, but we have to get into um, we 
have to get into uh, some reviews. Okay. <laughs> you got? Do you have some good ones? You're some. I have. Brother, I have. Um, so, so uh, quick update. Lean, um, a week ago, I took yeah, a little. Say why? Yeah. Talk, talk to us about your your VA experience. You had some good ones. So. Oh, actually, no. You know what? I will. You know, actually, yeah. thank you for thank you for one interrupting me too. Um, yeah, You're let welcome. me start. Let let me start with that. I I actually, I want to say I, I will be having surgery next week, um, and got the ball moving, which in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. And ever since um, I made it on the surgery list, things have been kind of moving very efficiently. Um, I've gotten phone calls. Uh, other than the how quick they tell you like the day before you have to be there at zero eight that kind of sucked but it's uh it's it's working out so shout out to the baltimore va for helping yeah, me yeah, out. okay there it is come on like you're just digging it up but you're just you're just digging it in but no i wanted to talk uh last week i took a little leisure trip uh me and my uh, girlfriend went out to uh, san diego to uh to visit a friend so i figured it would like hell let's let's check out what the va situation was down there so coming in at a staggering 3.6 um that's what the yeah 3.6 stars on google review obviously i try to pick a juicy one uh so uh what's his name here oh this is uh, alicia alicia poor says uh, a horrible place this place will only hurt you Everyone who works here is disgusting and is a, a, a leech on the taxpayers. The worst veterans hospital in the country. I trusted I would be safe and vulnerable and in a vulnerable position, but I was not. I was severely injured in their radiology department. I was over exposed to uh, ionizing radiation and I was oh, going to the die. That's the die they put in you uh, 15 plus times more absorbent iodized radiated dose that is, rec that is recommended for the type of ct scan that i needed in the first place okay and it, this this goes on so i encourage anybody to to, to go check it out but i don't mean to laugh i'm sorry I, I mean listen i just had one of those and i was wondering what they were pumping in me i couldn't it's imagine if if she's really like if this is really truthful and she really knows the dosage and she knows what she should have yeah. she shouldn't have that much that's well, that's ask Courtney. Point. Courtney would know. I, I, I don't. I, yeah, I, that's one of those things when they put it in you, you can feel it like burn. Right. Mm -hmm. It's obviously foreign and not supposed to be in your body. You can pretty much tell like, yeah, your body's telling you this isn't supposed to be in there. But she said 15 times the amount, yes. correct? Yes, 15 times uh, the amount. I don't I don't know how she judged how, how she judged it, but that's, that's incredible. I'm sorry, I I can't. Okay. So then, uh, so then I decided to to travel over to Phoenix, Arizona, and they're coming in at a staggering 3.4. Uh, and and my my boy Dante Samuel says uh, this place is the worst VA hospital I've ever been to, uh, and I've been to a total of 18. Jeez. The staff are rude. Lazy, unprofessional, unethical, and flat out disrespectful. I thought years ago when the Phoenix VA scandal made international news that things would change. Shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they didn't. <laughs> That's Apparently they didn't. Yeah. So, uh, so Dante Samuels uh, is not a happy uh, uh, customer at the. He's not endorsing the Phoenix, uh, Arizona VA anytime soon, right? Not um, I, I wasn't aware of any scandal or uh no that's that. no there was you don't remember that i'm pretty sure was, i'm pretty sure it was out in, in arizona they that's when like everybody started realizing the va was like kind of a shitty place and it was more of a mainstream topic because something something big happened and then all of a sudden benefits for veterans started changing that was there was a there was something out i there. remember the first time someone committed suicide outside the va and that really shook people um yeah. was that the guy that set himself on fire that was the guy that shot himself but uh i, I didn't hear about the guy that set himself on, on fire either Jeez. i think that I, I do i hope somebody out there listening that can correct me but it might have been dc I think, that's um i think he yeah. set himself or was it out in front of some bill it was some a veteran something he, i'm pretty sure he set himself on fire yeah i have never uh well, I didn't hear about that. that's horrible yeah 15 so, times huh 
fish yeah but she, she must be a walking a walking well that's a great point though like how 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 in the world would she know right like do you feel it and you're like oh that's 15 times yeah more. that's definitely 15 times that's, more than what you're yep. supposed to um uh, uh, yeah I'm, I'm i'm guessing that she's trying to give her best educated guess on but you i mean you can definitely tell that stuff's not supposed to be in your body it's just it's just the story kind of made me laugh Okay. Oh my god! It's oh yeah, the way she the way she put it when I was reading, yeah. it, this is definitely one we want to talk about. Um, so, uh, so Matt G, you got any saved rounds, my friend? No, you know, I think uh, I I think basically to sum up the whole suicide prevention and everything, you know, I want to bring up two things. Number one, there's not always signs. All right, um, you can be around somebody. And they could be smiling one day and dancing and laughing as hear hear and see stories about all the time. And uh, you don't know the the personal demons. Yes, that was my dog, uh, mom, drinking water. I'm sorry. You don't know the personal demons that people are fighting and that are going through. A lot of times they'll put on a a happy face for you. Um, So no matter if someone's sad or happy, always just kind of, Ask people you care about and ask people you love how they're doing, regardless, because um, you might be surprised the answer you're going to get. Secondly, with Mike uh, and that that young Marine who just broke down, I've been there before emotionally uh, where someone would ask, are you okay or how are you doing? And then also you just start crying. Yeah, yeah. it's it's almost like, you know, you just let loose. So you don't have to do all these big extravagant things to help somebody. It's just yeah. asking you questions sometimes um, and caring. And uh, it's just that simple. So we, we, we need to do better at that. I agree. Well, but I uh, listen, so I'm looking forward. So uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate it. And as a reminder, I'm going to throw this up here real quick. We uh, are going to be going right into our Romeo Buddy Check, hosted right here by yours truly, <laughs> Talk Show. Um, if you have received an email, uh, get ready, get on, logged on, uh, grab a beverage of choice. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing everybody really, really soon. I appreciate everybody for tuning in tonight and taking this message seriously. Uh, again, on the on the screen, we have the 988 number. Uh, that's the three-digit nationwide phone number to connect directly to a 988 suicide and uh, crisis line by calling or texting 988. You'll be directly connected with mental health professionals. So um, it's an easy number to remember. Yeah. Keep it in your uh, keep it in your phone. Keep it in your mind. And um, again, thank you very much, everybody, for for being with us tonight. Uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all next week. Happy stay Thursday again. Thank you for joining us. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.